So number six, uh, which is most likely not to have camber built in? And then our choices are composite deck, double T, open web steel, LH joists, wood glue lamb. So the first question here is what the heck is camber? Yeah, so camber is a natural crown, kind of like this picture over here shows, where the piece isn't going to come out flat. It is going to have an upward bend to it. And one of the reasons why we like that is if you think about some of your long spans, if you start out flat, it's only going to keep deflecting downward. So we'd like to start with an upward crown. That way, when you start loading, get your roofing on a big uh, stadium or something, it'll bring it down a little bit and, and then you won't have... You won't right, have so ponding issues when it wants to rain and right. Sit on so it your starts ribs. it starts crowned upward, mm -hmm. and then by the time it actually gets real loading, it 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 loads into flat ish. Right. Um, and some are more crowned than others. It kind of depends yep. on the situation. Correct. But the the concept of camber is that idea of the crowning it up a little bit. Right. So then the question is, all right, of these, which ones uh, uh, are often crowned? So let's let's jump to double T for a second. What the heck is the double T? So double T is this shape over here where it's got two stems and a flange. Okay, and, and so that's a precast. That's a precast concrete. Um, and the place you'll often see these things is like, you'll there'll be single T's, there'll be double T's. You'll see them in parking garages mm -hmm. and stuff like time. that. And they're pretty robust structures. I mean, they can they can span pretty far and they uh, can take a pretty big load. Um, and they, uh, they're they often used in these um, things where you don't mind having seams like a parking garage. And, you know, so they're they're pretty big deal. Like the, what would be a typical span of one of those things? Like, I don't know. 40 feet. I've done them up to 100. Feet. Yeah. So like 60 feet is probably pretty typical. 100 feet starting to get, get pretty long, but you could certainly do it. Mm -hmm. um, and something like a precast concrete, that's totally going to have camber yeah. built into it. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's, it just, it's just begging for it, right? Because it's going to have creep over time. Uh, it's going to, it's well, going to keep the whole deflecting. Purpose too. I mean, it, it gets tensioned in the plant. And so as you release the tension, the tendons and you cut them and cut them to a shape, when they release, they're going to pull inward. And right. so it just wants to pop that middle up. So what she's saying is that it, when they pre-stress these things, so while it's being cured, they have these these uh, steel tendons that run through it and they pull them really hard. And then when it all mm -hmm. uh, cures, it's it that's what's creating that... Uh, um, uh, that camber up. So, so, uh, definitely the double T is going to have camber. Yeah. Uh, and then let's take a look at the open web steel LH joists. Um, those are long span joists. Um, yeah. and the, the LH is what's telling us that, uh, and those are absolutely going to have camber, mm -hmm. same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, those, the, the camber is going to be built in because you're, that's for example, Heather's example of putting the roofing on something like that. You're going to, those are fairly light structures. And so in order to give them a little bit more capacity, you put the camber in yep. and then when it gets that roof load on it, it's going to settle down, uh, into, uh, essentially the, the, the correct slope for the drainage of the roof. Right. Um, so then the real question is, uh, between A and D composite deck versus wood glue lamb. Uh, what do you want to say about the wood glue lamb? Well, wood glue lamb is a manufactured product, so if you wanted to put a camber into it, you certainly can. It's it's an easy material to put camber into because it's a it, you're making it up, right? Yep. I mean, it's it's one of the ways that you can give that wood glue lamb some that little extra boost of capacity is by building right. in that camber, and then when it does deflect, because it is wood after all, it'll deflect some. Mm -hmm. uh, when it does deflect, it'll deflect to flat, and right. so uh, while it won't necessarily happen every time, sometimes wood glue lambs are used more decoratively than they are um, for serious levels of, of structure. But when you talk about a glue lamb, you're generally talking about a pretty serious structure generally yes. and it's l very likely to have camber mm -hmm. so therefore we are left once again uh, here with a the composite deck so tell me about the composite deck so a composite deck is the the fluted material that you're going to put on top of your actual structure which is a lot of times beams and we don't like to roll deck it's a difficult material to roll so that's why uh, if you were just looking at these which of these I would ask myself which of these can I actually camber and this one pops immediately into my mind that while you could camber, it's very difficult to camber. But one of the things to be... And it would be hard to, to judge how much you correct, would camber yeah. it. One of the things, though, to be not confusing in this is uh, a composite beam system 
typically does have camber in the beams because you are so a lot of times having lighter beams. Because you're getting go. the benefit out of the concrete in Correct. the deck. So while it's under a wet condition, it needs a little bit of oomph to not deflect and have this big ponding situation in the concrete. So if this had said not a composite deck, but a, a composite beam system, then that also could have had camber Correct. in it, but because it was just talking about the deck. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that may be a little bit of a cheat. I don't know. I, I think it's a reasonable uh, response. Yeah.